Missy Sorg. I am one of the co-organizers of uh, PodCamp Pittsburgh. I have been involved with PodCamp Pittsburgh since PodCamp Pittsburgh 3. So this is going to be my third year. And it's been an interesting little uh, venture from year one for me, which was three, to now. The question that I get a lot of is, what is PodCamp? And people want to know, what, what does it have to do with what, what is it? Um, PodCamp started out from podcasting, uh, primarily video and audio podcasting. But PodCamp Pittsburgh is a little bit more than that to the extent that we bring in social media and new media in addition to podcasting. So we teach people in the community about how to, anything from basics, how to start a blog, how to start a Facebook account, how to start an audio podcast, to more intermediate and more advanced sessions that show how to use it more specifically in different arenas. Uh, sessions change year to year. PodCamp is important for nonprofits because nonprofits obviously work under strict budgets, um, stricter necessarily than what a regular corporation would necessarily work under. Um, a lot of the stuff that we teach is how to use free resources throughout the internet to promote, build, and learn for your business. Uh, so it's important for the nonprofits because it's a session and information that they would necessarily not have to pay for, that if it was elsewhere, they would have to be paying, you know, upwards of even $500 to attend sessions and different things like that. Um, the variety of topics are also important because if you pay $500 to attend a seminar, you're only getting a little small piece of what PodCamp has to offer. So I, I think that that's an important thing as far as the nonprofits are concerned. Um. What's been your favorite moment for a My favorite part as one of the organizers in, along the planning process is twofold. I like to, I, I love the planning process itself, the meetings, the getting together with people, to, the going over ideas for different things. But more specifically, I love to see what all of that planning and organizing and putting together turns into. Uh, that weekend for me is kind of like a whirlwind. Uh, it, in comparison, it's, it's kind of like planning a wedding and then actually having the wedding because there's so much that goes into it and then it's this huge magical weekend that's just, there's great conversation, there's great sessions. It's just so amazing. That's the best way I can describe it. It's, it's just so amazing. <laughs> Who have I met with social media that, that sticks out? I'm going to say a good solid 90% of the friends that I currently have I've met through PodCamp and I've met through social media. Um, I kind of knew them through my husband previously to the extent that they were his friends, but being involved with PodCamp, they're more my friends than just his friends. I mean, they're, they're still his friends, don't get me wrong, but they're, they're my friends as well. and. I've got to meet the Morning Freak Show guys and play softball with them. That, that's kind of cool. Um, Pit Girl, I got to meet her, which, which was kind of a huge thing as far as not even necessarily social media in Pittsburgh. It was a huge news topic in Pittsburgh. I mean, she was even on CNN. And of course, Pit Girl uh, was the anonymous blogger here in Pittsburgh who wrote about various risque topics. I mean, she called out the city of Pittsburgh on numerous, numerous, numerous things. And in doing so, she created, a, she stirred up a lot of buzz. Somebody found out who she was and she decided instead of having that person out her, she would out herself. And it was this huge media thing in Pittsburgh it was also this huge media thing to the extent that she was on CNN for a brief period of time as they were talking about this anonymous blogger and how you know she's now been outed. One session that I really wanted to attend um, 
was the culin the culinary quarry session from last year's PodCamp, uh, PodCamp Pittsburgh Five. As a foodie, I love to see how other people use social media with regard to food, and his blog pretty much entails that. He goes over various things with regard to you know recipes that he's trying to different things that he's doing with with food. And I really enjoyed the session for that purpose because it was something that hit home to me as a cooker and a baker and a person loving to prepare and do food, that this guy is using social media in a way to promote that. And I just thoroughly enjoyed the session. Well, Pop Camp Pittsburgh can be found various places on the internet. We have our, our home base essentially is our website at www.podcamppittsburgh.com. We also have our Facebook page. We also have our Twitter, uh, our Twitter, uh, we're at PCPGH. In addition to our own promotion through those websites, you can also hear about PodCamp Pittsburgh through other people who have attended and who will be attending and who will be presenting at PodCamp. Um, just do a basic Google search and see what you get for PodCamp Pittsburgh, and it's sure to be entertaining and it's sure to be informative. We also have hashtags uh, available, um, hashtag PCPGH6, uh, for instance, is this year's. Uh, we also have various uh, hashtags listed from previous years, last year obviously being PCPGH5, that we've asked people to tag their information with. So if you search that, you'll, you're also going to come up with all sorts of blog posts, Twitter feeds, photographs um, through Flickr, and pretty much anywhere on the internet. If you search it, you'll get a lot of interesting things on how people have enjoyed PodCamp in the past.